started right away, especially because there's people in the back, and I was thinking they they had to stand this time, but they also had the pizza. <laughs> so I figured maybe some of the people in front that should go quickly. So okay, so uh, I want to get started right away. You asked who the techies were and who the who the providers were and things like that, but I'm I'm kind of curious. How many of you want to start a business versus already started a business versus never want to start a new venture? How many people have already started a new business? Okay. It's like two thirds it looked like. How many people have uh, have not yet started but want to? And how many people just never want to start a business? <laughs> a few, okay. Okay, just getting a feel. And um, what are some of the reasons people are here? If, if, if maybe one or two or three people don't mind sharing, just to get a feel. People are networking, meeting new people. Okay, networking and meeting new people just in similar areas? Uh huh. <clears throat> Networking, meeting new people, and actually now looking for a job. Okay, not creating your own job. Not yet. Not that ambition at this point. All right, I'll, I'll check with you at the end of the talk. <laughs> <laughs> and one more. Advertising for positions. And this, couldn't hear you. Advertising for positions. Advertising for positions. So you're looking for people. Yep. So everyone's going to find him afterward. <laughs> well, one more. What was that? Potential for new business. Potential for new. Okay, so kind of networking also. Exactly. Okay, cool. Just getting a feel. Okay, one more. Oh. Talk of crap. Okay, okay, great. I'm glad to hear it's like a, a wide uh, bunch of different things. Um, and oh yeah, here's this myth that I hear a lot, and I just want to get a feel for this. How many people here feel like to to start a new business you need a great idea? One. Since I'm full of great ideas, people. that's what I think. Oh, because you're already <laughs> doing it. Okay, so a few people. Good. I'm glad to hear that because that's one of the big myths that is actually one of the things that drove me into what I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to talk about a little bit of stuff at the beginning of who I am and some background and what, what drove me to context. But really the bulk of this is going to be about how to start, how to behave and think entrepreneurially, even if you've never done that before. Was anyone here at my talk last year? Okay, so that one, this is kind of similar except that that one was eight steps to go from no idea whatsoever to funding. And this one is going to be, it's actually 10 steps now. I've been 25% more. <laughs> well, these step, well, I'll point out the new steps. So uh, I've, I've found that they're very much more effective that these two, two steps add. Anyway, what I want to do is give you guys the ability to, if you haven't started a business or you, you, you've thought about being entrepreneurial but you've never done it, a lot of times you know what to do but you don't really know the steps, the little steps to take to make it not, not seem so risky. To me, starting a business to me, the biggest risk is not doing something that you care about, if you could, because I don't want to go, I don't want to retire and not, not know what I was doing. And a lot of people think the risk is doing something, but I'd, I'd like to change that for you guys as well. So to think that starting, starting something is not a big risk. So, all right, your needs, as I understand, this is what I prepare to talk, figuring this is probably what people are here for. So I'll put up a few need, your needs as I understand them, and hopefully it'll cover everyone here. So one is that, a bunch of people here probably start new ventures. So I saw a lot of hands go up there. Probably a lot of people want to think and act entrepreneurially, even if you don't necessarily want to start something new. So you want to have ownership of a project that you, even if you're in a company that you didn't start, even if it's a big company that's not new or young. Then there are probably people here who are good at tech, but maybe don't have a lot of business skills. So this is a lot of, this hopefully will provide a lot of that. Did I miss anything? Did anyone here? Did everyone here get at least one thing here that covers them? Is there anything else? I should, should I take anything off or put anything on? How to market when you're doing something that might be obscure to others? Okay, how to market when it might be obscure to others? I think I'll cover that. If I if if it doesn't seem covered by the end of it, let me know and ask again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, all right. So the agenda is going to be like I said at the beginning. A bit of context. I'm going to talk about myself, and. A little bit about some people who've gone through the course that I'm going to describe to give you a, an idea of what you get when you do this course. Then the context, what the pedagogy and what drove me to create what I'm going to show you. And then I'm going to go really quickly the 10 steps that I talked about. And that's going to be one slide, but then the bulk of it is going to be the 10 steps I'm going to go through. And for people who, if you just pay attention to, oh, I should check, can I get the slides to everyone? Sure. Yeah, we can post it after. Okay. So I'll make, oh, sorry to, for the people who are taking notes already. You know, okay, you'll get the slides. And uh, if all you want to do is like get like, here's a basic, basic structure I can follow, the slides in this talk may be enough for you. 
For others, there'll be, uh, I'll, describe the, uh, I'll describe the course at the end. I'm also going to describe some results. So uh, for most of you, for a lot of you, I think this may be something for you to walk away from and say, I know what to do. I can get the slides. I can listen to the, the we're going to post the audio. And I, maybe I can, I can do something that I didn't think I could. For others, if they want more depth, then they, I'll talk about the course at the end. There'll be discounts and all that. So that's what, this, what we're going to cover today. I should be able to keep it under an hour. Uh, if there are questions along the way, just raise your hand and ask. So a little bit about myself. First, if you looked at my resume or my CV, you'd see, as you mentioned, I have a PhD. There I'm getting it. It was in astrophysics. At the time, well, I still love physics. Uh, but, well, OK, so I was getting a PhD there. I, was, I worked on a satellite. It's up there orbiting the Earth. Still working long after it was, well, it was supposed to go for 10 years. We're now 16 years in, so very happy about that. Um, and although I have to say, I wanted to do research, and I, I, I thought I would love it. It wasn't really what I wanted to do. I realized uh, it was a great education, but I just didn't like the life of research. And some friends of mine and I said, or some friends came to me and said, let's start a business. I had an idea, and here's the first article about me in the Wall Street Journal, about the, the company in the Wall Street Journal. Um, I'm not going to go into the business, but it was, uh, the, you know, that was the technology that I created. Loved it. It was the late 90s. Things were going really well. Early 2000s, we hit a recession. Physics is good for a lot of things, but not for how to manage a company through a recession. I got squeezed out by the investors. Very painful experience. Uh, very painful experience. And, but I realized I really loved starting a company, and I loved pursuing my passion, and I knew that I wanted to keep doing that. And I also knew that I needed more business skills. So I went back to get an MBA, looking suspiciously like I did when I got the PhD. <laughs> <laughs> That's the good picture. And uh, you know, I went in for the hard skills, because I thought my company's running out of money. I better learn how to do some finance and accounting. And I did get those skills, but I found that soft skills like entrepreneurship, like leadership, like negotiation, and, and things like that were much, for me, much more valuable. Things that emotional awareness, social skills, were things that I just like. I didn't understand, I didn't really know about it, I kind of swept that stuff under the rug. And since then, this is about 10 years ago, this has been my big passion. And actually, ten, for the past 10 years, has been, my passion has been what's going on in the side of life that I didn't really get, which has been improving my life tremendously. But also in the past couple years has been not just what's going on, but as I've taught more is how do I teach this? Because I knew that what I got, I got a lot of lectures and case studies and in, in the case of entrepreneurship and leadership, a lot of biography. And that stuff was more useful than nothing. But I knew that there was a lot more because when I went out in the world and I started trying to practice entrepreneurship and leadership and things like that, I would go into a room and I'd say, OK, I'm, I'm doing a negotiation. And I know I've read the book. I know all the principles of negotiation. I walk in, and the second that it starts, I'm like, everything's out the window. I forgot everything. I don't know what I'm doing. And I learned that learning about a subject is not the same as learning to practice the subject. And I wanted, so I got in the world, and I did learn it in the world. So why shouldn't we be able to learn that? Why should we not be able to learn that in a classroom or in a school environment? Why can't we structure that? And that's what the past several years have been for me, has been taking pedagogy that works in other areas that are like entrepreneurship and applying that into teaching entrepreneurship. And so this course is the output of that. The courses that I teach in university are the output of that, too. And I just covered a lot of stuff that's later in the talk. But uh, it's a passion of mine. So Esquire named me best and brightest uh, a few years ago, and very proud. I don't know if that's related. I don't know, but I'm very proud, and so I have to put it up there. OK, so I'm an executive and personal coach. I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching. Also, uh, with the Columbia Business School program in social intelligence, I coach leadership and sometimes give talks there. And I'm an adjunct professor at NYU. And so the course, actually last year, the people who came heard me talking about a course that I taught once, once in the engineering school, but since, since then I've taught it several times more. And the, the course, the online course that I'm making available here too, has been, many people have gone through it as well. So it's much more mature now than it was before. Then there's, hopefully make this your favorite blog. Darren Swing from New Jersey to Manhattan. Uh, a cool story that I'll, another time. Um, I post every single day. So I recommend checking it out. And then recently, I've, yeah, every day, I saw a look of like, really? I'm like 2,200 posts. I haven't missed a post in, in five or six years. Which is, that's a whole other story. Uh, but it got me this. I'm a columnist for Inc. And so I write about uh, entrepreneurship and leadership and hustling and things like that on, in Inc. So 
Now let me tell you a couple stories about people who have gone through the program to give you context of what, if you do what I'm talking about, you come out with. So Anil was one of my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients and he came to me and he said, I saw that you do, you have an entrepreneurial background and I would like some coaching because I work at a company, I, we provide services to hedge funds. The guy was making a lot of money, he was very happy uh, in terms of um, his job security and so forth. But he kept giving, he wanted to have access to jo uh, like strategy and, and decision making in the, in the company. And he kept coming in with proposals and they kept listening to him and then they would never act on the proposals. And he felt like he wasn't, they weren't listening to him. He didn't feel valued. And so he went through a bunch of these exercises and after a little while, he came back and he said, Josh, I don't, I don't want to leave my company anymore. I don't want to start my own company. And I said, why not? And he said, well, we've been doing these exercises together and I've been listening a lot more to what my managers want and what the problems at my company are. And I've learned to present these things in ways that are responsive to what they are looking for, to solving problems that they care about, not just things that I like. And so the last proposal that I gave them, they said yes to. And so he realized that he could get ownership of a project in his company. He didn't want to start a business, you know, you know register an LLC with the state and hire a lawyer to do all the patenting and trademarking and stuff like that. And he didn't want to get a benefits package for his employees and go for a year without pay. He wanted ownership. He wanted a project that was his. He wanted to know this is something that I created. And that's what he got. And so that's one outcome that can come out of this. Another is Nikita is a, is a, she was an undergrad, or she still is an undergrad, and going in the direction of law. And I think still is planning to go to law school. And you'll see that there's a project that you work on over the course of doing these, these exercises. And her idea was to do, I'm not gonna go into details, but it was a medical device. And when I heard, the, heard her describe the project, I thought, medical device, FDA approval, this is gonna be kind of hard. I don't know if this is the right thing to do, but I also thought it's gonna give her something to work on through the project. So as you'll hear in, in the exercises, she has to go and talk to a lot of people. And she talked to some doctors and the doctors put her in touch with this doctor up in New Haven, I think at Yale. And that doctor put her in touch with the medical device company. And that medical device company took her project. And last I heard, which was like a couple weeks ago, they're in prototype. And she is quasi leading a group of medical engineers. People who are very capable of engineering stuff but did not come up with the stuff on their own. And she's like a valuable part. And she's, I think, 20, 21 years old right now. Nice thing to put on your resume. Then, so Grace was a classmate of Nikita. Grace always wanted to go into the music business. When she wanted to take my entrepreneurship class to learn about entrepreneurship in general, had no idea she was getting into something that was experiential. And her thing was that she, can I say this quickly? She's a, she was really into the music business and she wanted to, do you guys know things like uh, Governor's Ball, like these summer festivals? Yep. Like I'm too old for it, but you guys are all younger than me. So um, there are these big festivals and one of the programs that they do is you can volunteer to be at the event and then you don't have to pay. So you go around picking up trash and stuff like that, showing people what lines to go through. And her idea was, since those are kind of expensive to go to, and the volunteering is just picking up garbage, she would create a separate organization that would organize with the city of New York, with the city of New York and like soup kitchens and food pantries and things like that. You would volunteer at charitable places and get the ticket instead from, from volunteering there. And you might say, well, wait, now they're giving away tickets but not getting the benefit of the labor, but it turns out they don't always get such great press, and now they can say we've donated so many thousands of hours to these places, and they're all in, well, Governor's Ball is in Reynolds Island, so it's in Harlem right across the way, so all these people coming through are people who have volunteered their time. And this led to her working with SFX, which is a publicly traded company that does these other big festivals. And I was there when she was meeting with SFX, and this guy is like running this big division in this big firm. And he's like talking to her, and he's like, he's saying, he kept asking her, what about this problem? What about that problem? And she keeps saying, well, we did it with Governor's Ball this way, and then we refined it and worked that way. And I'm like, wow, she's really answering these things well because she's talking through her experience. And he says to her, he just pauses. He says, he says by the way, how old are you? <laughs> she goes, 19. He goes, oh, interesting. Okay. And then he goes right back into business. And that's the sort of thing that comes out of this because the projects get you out in the world working with people. So RJ, I'm not going to talk about his project, but I will tell you that he was a student of mine and uh, last fall, and when he came back in January, we, we got together, and he was telling me that his, his family runs a retail store back where he is at home, and he's back at home for the holidays, and 
They say, you know, get to work, get, get on the floor and go sell some stuff on the retail, on the floor of the store. And he goes down the floor he's, and he outsold the professional salespeople that have been working there for years. And he's never taken a sales class. He only, my entrepreneurship class was the only class that he's taken remotely like it. And he said he was just going out on the floor and doing the stuff that we worked on. And he outsold the salespeople. So there's nothing in my course about how to handle disgruntled salespeople. That he had to figure out on his own. But that's the sort of thing. It's not just for entrepreneurship. Shireen was a student of mine who, she wanted to go into fashion. And one of my guest speakers uh, came in from, the, from fashion in various different ways. And after he spoke, he, she said, can I meet with this guy? Can, can, can you be in touch with him? And I said, is it related to the course? And she said, yeah, actually, I'd like to get advice from him and so forth. And she talks to him and develops a relationship with him that a couple weeks later, he's really high up and really well connected. And he invited her, and she got to go to a Victoria's Secret fashion show. Like, if you're in fashion, I think that's like a pretty big thing, a pretty big deal. I certainly would have liked to have been invited. <laughs> <laughs> so these are a few examples of outcomes. And by the way, Shireen, when she, on the first day of class, when I said, you guys are going to be taking this stuff that we're doing, and you're going to be doing a project of your own, you're going to start a project of your own, that you may continue after class ends, it's up to you if you do or not. She raised her hand and said, what if I'm scared, too scared to do this? What if I don't know how to do it? And I said, you're going to go step by step. It's little steps. Every, you know, by the end, you'll feel like you've gone very far, but each step is not a big deal. And that's, it ended up she's doing stuff that's like fashion stuff. Okay, so sound interesting? Okay, by the way, everyone can hear me in the back? Just to make sure, I should have asked a long time ago. Oh, Tyler, one more story? All right, well, I'll be really quick. Tyler, his idea was to, um, to start a program for uh, young African-American males in high school to come and to bring them into NYU. And he kept showing me the stuff that I was looking at. Like, it looked like it was going to be too hard to do because it's so bureaucratic at universities to get space and to get things to happen. And next thing I know, this, this project that he began in my class was happening. Like before the semester ended, he, had br he was bringing cohorts of students into, the, into NYU and getting things happening to the point where he actually won an award within before the semester end, ended of doing one of these projects. And he was just doing the homework. And that's what led to it. He was probably doing more than that because he was really getting into it. But it was, that was the structure that he was following. OK. So some starting points for me that, makes me that make me so passionate about this is a big one. The myth that I asked about before is a lot of people talk to me about how they want to start businesses. And a lot of them have never started a business. And they don't sound like they're ever going to. And I ask them, what's, well, now you know the myth that, that gets me the most of the number one reason people give me for not starting a business is they say that they, they haven't had the great idea. 